New details have emerged about last week's frightening incident when a freshly docked Russian module started firing its thrusters, causing the International Space Station to flip backwards one and a half times during a dramatic 47-minute tug-of-war. Here are the details. Gizmodo reports that NASA has provided new information about the accident the International Space Station suffered on Thursday, July 29th. The incident happened some three hours after Russia's Nauka module docked to the space station. Russian crew members were working to integrate the module when its thrusters suddenly fired, trying to pull the module away from a space station it was securely docked to. The worst part was that Nauka was configured so that it would receive commands only from a ground station in Russia, and the next pass over Russia was 70 minutes away. Unable to disable Nauka's thrusters, Russian controllers counteracted the momentum by firing thrusters attached to the Zvezda service module. Fearing this might not be enough, they also fired thrusters on a Progress cargo ship docked to the station. This 15-minute tug-of-war finally stopped when Naoka's thrusters suddenly cut out for reasons that are still unclear. With attitude control regained, the flight controllers were able to right the ship. NASA maintains that the crew of seven was never in any danger, but Harvard-Smithsonian astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell told Gizmodo this was one of the more serious incidents in the 24-year history of the ISS. The loss of attitude control, he said, risks breakup of the entire structure. A piece of space debris not much wider than a millimeter has smashed a hole through an important part of the International Space Station. Here are the details. Science Alert reports that a piece of space debris has hit and damaged part of the International Space Station. Photos released by NASA shows a small hole that had been punched through the station's Canadarm2 robotic arm. The arm has been a fixture on the ISS for 20 years. It's a multi-jointed titanium robotic arm that can assist with maneuvering objects outside the ISS. It's unclear exactly when the impact occurred. The damage was first noticed on May 12th during a routine inspection. NASA says the robotic arm seems to be working normally despite the damage. The space debris problem does seem to be increasing. Last year, the ISS had to perform emergency maneuvers three times to avoid collisions with space debris at its altitude of around 400 kilometers. An estimated 130 million fragments of man-made material smaller than a millimeter are orbiting Earth right now. Over 23,000 pieces bigger than a softball are being tracked in low Earth orbit to help satellites and the ISS avoid collisions, but the millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Earth's superpowers have added to this space debris by blowing up satellites with missiles in the past. The latest to do so was China, who blew up one of its orbiting satellites in 2007, adding more than 2 million pieces of scrap larger than a millimeter in size. In Earth's orbit, small fragments like that can travel at speeds of around 32,000 kilometers per hour, each with the potential to cause more damage than a shell fired from a tank. It's that time again. Remain indoors if at all possible, stock up on food, and if you must go out, whatever you do, keep your eyes fixed on the sky at all times. Of course, what we're talking about is the fact that China has just launched a new rocket into space, and we all know what happens when it does that, right? Regular viewers will remember that the Long March 5B rocket it used to send the Tianhe module of its space station into orbit memorably crashed to Earth last month, causing widespread criticism. So the question now is, what could be falling on our heads next? Here's what you need to know. China has launched three astronauts up to its new space station from its Zhoushan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China, according to Space.com, its first crewed mission in almost five years. The astronauts are aboard the Shenzhou-12 spaceship, which was propelled by a Long March 2F Y-12 rocket, according to the Associated Press. Space.com reports that Shenzhou-12's launch is the third of 11 required to build China's new space station, which it expects to complete before 2023. Already in position are the Tianhe core module, which contains the astronauts' living quarters, and the robotic Tianzhou-2 cargo craft, which attached to the core module late last month. Shenzhou-12 will dock with the core module, and the astronauts will then spend three months aboard. Tianhe is the third set of living quarters China has sent up to space after Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. However, it is much larger than those vessels at 54 feet or 16.6 meters long versus their 34 feet or 10.4 meters. The core module contains three separate bedrooms and three times more interior space than its predecessors, Space.com reports, citing China's state-run press agency Xinhua. Once they have docked, 
the three astronauts will set up testing and experiments and conduct a series of spacewalks, according to the Associated Press. Two further lab modules called Wentian and Mengtian will complete the space station when they are attached to either side of Tianhe next year, according to Space.com, leaving it about 15% of the size of the International Space Station. The launch of the Tianhe module last month was criticized after part of the rocket that carried it to space made an uncontrolled re-entry to Earth. However, Ji Qiming, assistant director of China's manned space agency, dismissed the possibility of that happening again, according to the Associated Press. China has published the rocket's trajectory and and it is expected to burn up well before it could cause any danger," he said. So China says we should all be safe this time, and Xi even took the time to offer out a hand of friendship regarding the use of its new station. Outer space is the commonwealth of people all over the world, and exploring the universe is the shared cause of all mankind," Ji said. He then added, I believe that in the near future, when the Chinese space station is complete, we will see Chinese and foreign astronauts taking on joint missions to the Chinese space station. Of course, in international politics, altruism should always be viewed with some suspicion, and there it is clear that China sees space as an important source of power. In fact, with the Associated Press reporting that the Chinese station is intended to be used for 15 years, it is likely to outlast the International Space Station, which is nearing the end of its lifespan. This could mean that very soon, humanity's only working space station is owned by China. That's a very interesting position for the U.S. to be in, given it blocked Chinese involvement in the International Space Station. There are currently more than 160,000 pieces of space junk floating in Earth's orbit, and 34,000 of these are no longer than 10 centimeters. These pieces move at incredible speeds and pose a real danger to all current and future spacecraft. The BBC reports that the world's first test satellite that uses magnets to gather up space junk will launch this week. The test satellite is called ELSA-D, and it consists of two spacecraft, a 175-kilogram chaser and a 17-kilogram target. These two units units will go up together on a Soyuz rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and, once in orbit, separate to play multiple games of cat and mouse. The chaser will use its sensors to find and chase down the target, latching onto it via a magnetic docking plate. It will then release the target for other capture experiments. The tasks will become increasingly complex, with the most difficult maneuver requiring the chaser to grab the target as it is tumbling. Ultimately, the chaser will grab the target and drop out of orbit to burn up up in the atmosphere. The company that created the LCD test satellite, Astroscale, says the next phase of the program would be to retrieve multiple pieces of debris in a single mission. The company expects to launch this mission by the end of 2023. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.